Your doctor tells you, you know what? You've got cancer, you've got ALS, you're going blind, or because of your accident, you're gonna have this disability, or maybe you broke your neck, and the fact is you're gonna be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of your life. The bad news. I remember when my mother watched her best friend go through ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, for two years, suffered and died. And a week after my mother buried her, her best friend, then her doctor told my mother she had it. She had a clear picture in her mind of what the next 24 months were gonna be for her. And she went into a nosedive, she went into depression. And I wanna talk about that moment today because I've got experts in pain here, experts who have faced this moment. And when you face this moment, I want you to have something to fall back on. Michael, uh, you had one of those moments and uh, you, you were flying around the country, you were, you were the president of Moody Bible Institute, you had uh, over you know, thousands of kids at, at the school and here you were, you're starting to suffer with pain and then all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, you got the bad news. Tell me what happened. Well, since 2001, John, I've been dealing with pain and different degenerative dis disease issues and had had uh, one surgery and then a second one in 2008. And that was a defining time that said, you have to change your life. Um, had a great doctor in Illinois and he said, uh, Dr. Easley, you've got to change your life or you're gonna be in a bad way. So you, as I tell people, it wasn't a, a hard decision, but it was a big decision uh, to change all that you had uh, hoped to do and had intended to do with what your future was gonna hold. So what did they actually do to you, Michael? Well, the, the major surgery I had eventually was in my cervical region, and they, uh, they sawed five vertebrae body in half. They fused five levels on each side of my cervical region, and I'm held together with titanium rods and screws called a mountaineering system. I kind of like that name, <laughs> <laughs> a mountaineering system. <laughs> but so my neck is fused in most of the, the flexion areas, and as a result of the disc disease and the fusions, uh, I live with 24-7 chronic pain. I remember when you told me you were going in, okay? And you didn't know, Michael, that you were gonna come out alive. Right. So what was going through your mind? You know, John, I'm a man of the word and I find all my hope in the word. People can give you some help and encouragement, but I have to go back to the scripture. And the psalmist in Psalm 40, I call it hindsight theology. He does a great job in, in telling us, I looked back on my life and now at this present time, I can see God's faithfulness. And a couple of points from Psalm 40, where he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. A, I don't like to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I hate waiting, and it's insufferable for me. The Hebrew is interesting there, it's two words. It's really, I waited and I waited. And I think for all of us when we're faced with difficult news or traumatic news or the unknown, the first thing you're gonna have to do is learn to wait patiently and the Hebrewism is I waited and I waited and we might say and I waited and I waited and I waited. But then he turns and he said, this is God's action, he inclined. So the one in trouble, the one in pain, the one in difficulty has to choose to wait on God. But then the psalmist says, I look back and he inclined his ear. It's like he, he cupped his ear down to us and said, he inclined his ear to me. He heard my cry. We, we don't get this. God hears the prayers of his people. Doesn't change the situation, but the psalmist says in 116, I love the Lord because he hears my prayer. So I should love God just because he hears me.